Yo, it's your boy Marcus, aka Just One Marcus on the Just One channel. The 76ers could be finals bound this year. They have the potential MVP in Joel Embiid. 33 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists a night with a steal and a block and a half. Shooting pretty well. The all-star snub, James Harden, 22 points, 6 boards, 11 assists with a steal a night. Shooting also insanely well. Tyrese Maxey on the come up, averaging 20 points a night, 3 boards, 3 assists. Shooting really well also. Then you start to get into some questionable players. Tobias Harris, 81 overall in the game, 15 points, 6 boards, 3 assists and a steal. His shooting splits for the season don't look that bad, but he's so like streaky and just unreliable as an offensive player at this point. He still has two years left on his deal, including this one. De'Anthony Melton, solid guy off the bench. He's putting up 40 from three, 80 from the line, shooting really well and playing insanely good defense. Montrez isn't in the lineup right now. Shake Milton also having a really good season. Honestly, everyone on the squad is just playing good all around. They picked up McDaniels as kind of a younger piece who's not shooting the best from three, but he does play really good defense. Then we're gonna have B-Ball Paul here, start to get some more minutes and see what he can be in the league. And then we have a vet here in PJ Tucker, who's just here to play defense and stress the floor. Then Niang is also having a good season stretching the floor as well. So I'm filming this on March 13th after the 76ers just took a dub against the Wizards. So they are the three seed in the East. The Celtics tonight just lost to the Rockets, which is a pretty questionable L. I still think they'll get pretty hot as the rest of the season goes on. I don't know if Philly could crack that two spot, but maybe if Joel keeps going off and then Harden can pick it up and keep going off as well and Tobias Harris won't have as, as many streaky nights, they could get it done. Here's the lineup I'm gonna go for just to wrap off this season here that's happening right now before we get into the first season of the rebuild. Harden at the one, Maxi at the two, Tobias three, PJ four, Joel five. Joel, Maxi, and Harden all getting 35 a night. De'Anthony Melton, 6th man, McDaniel, 7th man, Shake, 8th man, B-Ball Paul, 9th man, and Georges Niang as the 10th man. We're just going to sim the rest of this season out with no cuts here. And I'm just going to say really quick, so Harden has been rumored by multiple sources to be going back to Houston next year. And I might, even though I don't think it's going to happen in real life, and it has been rumored like highly possible to happen. As I'll go through these awards here real quick, if you want to stop and take a look at any of them, it's usually the same stuff every single year, like I said in my last video. But yeah, just to kind of spice up this rebuild as we get Embiid as Defensive Player of the Year, so I'd love to see that. Uh, just kind of spice up this rebuild and go in a different direction than probably most people would go. I might actually let Harden walk as Embiid doesn't get on all NBA first team, but we do get him on second team. Here's his stats, pretty much the same as what I just showed you. So yeah, we also get Harden on an all NBA team. So I'm thinking maybe I could do a sign and trade to send him to Houston, or I would just let him walk and go in a different direction. But we'll see once we get there if we're going to do that. Let's see where we ended up. We actually fell down to a three seed this year. I'm not going to go look through the stats or anything again because I already kind of went through them real quick. So game one against Brooklyn, we win. Game two, we win. Game three, we lose. Game four, we win. We should get out of here. And we actually don't get out in five. We get out of there in six, though. Second round against the Hawks. I'm also not going to show the lineups because it's literally the same as what they already are in real life since we already passed the trade deadline. As they go up 1-0 on us, 2-0, we come back 2-1, 2-2, 3-2 them. This happened in my last rebuild too. For some reason, the Hawks, after this recent update, are just on one and always make it to the finals. Let's see if they're gonna eliminate us here. And we take it to a game seven, sim through game. Okay, we get out of there in the conference finals to go against the Cavs, game one. We win game two. We lose game three, we lose game four, we win game five, we lose. Can we make a comeback like last series? We cannot, we lose in six to the Cavs. Jokic is your West MVP, Mitchell is your East MVP, and the Nuggets win it in five. Jokic is the MVP of the league and gets a championship and gets finals MVP. All right, going into this first actual year of the rebuild now, 2023 draft lottery. I don't think we would have any lottery picks here uh, from any other teams and it does not look like we do. We 
do not even have our own pick. It goes to the Jazz at 27. Here's what the top seven of the 2023 draft ended up being in this sim. If you want to stop and take a look, Scoot fell all the way to five, which is actually, I saw a report today. Some teams are valuing Brandon Miller higher than him now, and Scoot might start falling down in the draft mocks or draft position all i had was a second round pick i took this guy bailey sherman he seemed like he is a decent three-point scorer and just all-around player so i just picked him up there maybe he'll progress as a reserve harden declines his player option which is rumored to happen in real life max you were picking up uh daniel house accepted his uh jalen springer or Jaden springer will accept his too Qualifying offers, I will give it to B-Ball Paul. I'll give it to Mac McClung too, just for the vibes, but I'm not gonna give it to Louis King. Let's get into this 2023 free agency. Let's see who Harden has as his offer. So Jazz number one, the Rockets are here at number two. So I think I'm gonna give him what I, like the most I can offer him, then try to trade him to the Rockets for Kevin Porter Jr. and a bunch of first round picks. So uh, it'll be a sign and trade in that kind of sense. And then also get a good guy back and some future assets to maybe rework the team around Embiid after I move on from Tobias Harris or his contracts up. So yeah, I'm gonna offer him the most I can for five years. So his contract will be 43.88 million, ending at 57.93 when he's 38 years old. But at that point, he would probably end his career in Houston. So he obviously agrees to that. I'm gonna bring Shake Milton back too on a five-year bird deal, starting at 7.5 mil and ending at 9.9. .9. We're also gonna give Jalen McDaniels a four-year extension, starting at 8.5 mil and ending at 9.7. So Shake agrees and McDaniels agrees as well. Apparently, I don't have the money to actually give B-Ball Paul a contract, so we're just gonna hope he comes back here as McClung and B-Ball Paul both come back. Before we get into player progression here, well, James Harden already regressed down from a 91 to an 88. So his value has kind of gotten lower here. I think I could get Kevin Porter Jr. And maybe two first round picks here. We're going to try it from the Houston Rockets. So let's see if they agree to this in the 2023 offseason. They do not. I don't think Brooklyn's going to be good this next upcoming season. So I'd be good with just getting their 2024 unprotected first. I'd be shocked if they don't agree to this. They still don't. What if I add Furcon Korkmaz in the mix to give them some more spacing on their roster? Do they agree to this? They do. Okay, so now going into the 2023 player progression, we have Embiid staying the same. Maxi goes up four to an 88. Kevin Porter Jr. is still getting better. Tobias luckily stays the same. Melton, Milton, and B-Ball Paul all going up. Jaden Springer is going to get some run this year. He's going up and then our other guys down here are starting to go down, but they're not going to get that many minutes. Let's sim to this first actual season of the rebuild and get the lineup ready. Here's the 10 man lineup I put together. KPJ at the one getting 31 a night. Maxi at the two getting 33. Tobias at the three getting 29. McDaniels at the new four getting 31. With Embiid at the five still getting 36. Milton six man getting 19. Melton seventh man with 15. B-Ball Paul getting 17 as well as the eighth man then springer ninth man with 17 and pj tucker 10th man with 12. i might actually swap these guys around here just because it looks nicer to me we have a three and a half star balance system mcdaniels does not work well there but i may stop at the trade deadline and if i can sell off of tobias and the pick i just got if it ends up being valuable to upgrade like that if that doesn't work though, I'd probably just stick through it till the next off season, get a really good draft pick and then sign someone else in the off season. We are at the trade deadline. We are fifth in the Eastern Conference, which is not good enough to me. I did think this was gonna happen and I would need to make a move as we're only three games out of being the two seed. So the Eastern Conference is really tight. If we go to Team Intel, the Bulls are finally selling. They're, they're 13th in the conference, 23 and 34. They have no chance of making it and competing this year. And they have a bunch of old guys on their team who are going to be vets soon and are still pretty solid players in their own right, but just don't work with the team. I'm going to try to do something crazy here. I'd be shocked if it works though. Tobias Harris, that Brooklyn first I got, my first round pick this year, PJ Tucker, Daniel House to make the money work, and Jaden Springer, a young guy on the come up for Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and then Daniel Tice just to make the money work. I feel like the value overall is pretty fair. They are a selling team, so I think they would be willing to get off DeMar here and then Zach Levine as well to get some younger assets. So let's see if we can do this blockbuster trade. Wow, they agree to it. 
So we just picked up Zach Levine and Damar. And here's what our new nine man rotation looks like after we just bought at the trade deadline to try to push for a championship run with Embiid still here before he starts regressing. Kevin Porter Jr. at the one, Maxi at the two, Zach Levine at the four, DeRo or Zach Levine at the three, DeRozan at the four, and Embiid at the five with Melton, B-Ball Paul, Shake Milton, and Jalen McDaniels rounding off the rotation. That gives us a four-star system now. Let's sim to the end of the season. Hope we go up in the standings and we get a deep playoff run this year into the finals. 2023-24 season is about to wrap. We're 52 and 29 with one game left against the Hawks and we lose, so 52 and 30. Luka MVP, insane triple-double. Wemby Rookie of the Year, Ben Simmons, six man, Giannis Depoy, Garland Most Improved, and Quinn Schneider, Coach of the Year. Here's your All NBA first, still no Embiid on there. All NBA second, we also don't get Embiid on there, but we do get him on third team. He puts up 24 points, 12 boards, three assists, a steal, and two blocks this year, almost shooting 50, 40, 80. So, insanely efficient season for him. We also get him on all defensive first, and I think that would be everyone that we have on the teams. Where do we end up now? We end up as a two seed. So we were the five seed at the trade deadline and we ended up as a two seed. So love to see that. Stats on the year, Levine led the way, but these numbers are skewed. So we have to go before All-Star and since All-Star. And yeah, he ends up, his points come down obviously because we have so many more options on this team. Still gives us four rebounds, gives us more assists, a true steal a night for him. And he shoots pretty efficient still uh, overall. Maxi with no Harden in the lineup goes up to 23 points a night, three boards, three assists, shoots 56, 47, 87, absolutely insane. DeRozan, since he got here, his points obviously come down as well. His rebounds are and assists are pretty much the same though. And does he shoot worse? He shoots slightly worse from the field and three point line, but he shoots 90 from three and overall it's still really solid. Kevin Porter Jr.'s first year as a 76er, 14 points, four boards, almost six assists with a steal of the night, shooting more efficient than he did last year, so love to see that. DeAnthony Melton, just a solid guy off the bench that's pretty much an all around good type of player. Shake Milton also has an improvement season. Love to see that from him. Well, from the three point line and the field, or not the field, the free throw line, not from the field. So that's not the best. Jalen McDaniels, he's not really a good efficient scorer, but he does give us pretty good defense for the minutes that he gets. B ball Paul, 50 from three, 50 from the field, 50 from three, 80 from the line. How many attempts was that on? So he only shot 29 for the year and made 15. Honestly, that is insanely good. If he can do that in the playoffs, I will take it. He also gives us six or almost seven boards a night and a steal and almost a block in the few minutes he got. So he played really well. And then that was everyone else after the trades. Who will we have in the first round this year? We have the seven seed Pistons. Let's see what their squad looks like now. Kate is back, 89 overall, 84 Ivy. They got Brandon Miller, which is a huge pickup. 80 Brandon Miller. 81 Bagley, 82 Duran. They should be too early, and with the pickups I made at the trade deadline, this should be a breeze. Game number one. We lose the first game. We win the second one. We win the third one. We win the fourth one. Get us out of here. We get out of there in five. Love to see that. And Bede goes off for a 27 point double double. DeRozan and Levine come in and both put up almost 25 points on, in the closeout game and shoot insanely efficiently. Love to see that. Second round against the Cavs. Let's see who they have on their squad. They still have the same starting five with almost four 90s there in Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, and Allen. Then Isaac Okoro, hopefully Levine can take advantage of his low overall, even though Isaac Okoro is a really good defender. Game one, we win. Game two, we win. Game three, we win. Are we gonna sweep them? Oh my God, we sweep the three seed Cavs who eliminated us last year. Uh, Donovan Mitchell goes off, Darius Garland, Allen, and Mobley, honestly, all have good games. But Maxi goes off for 43-6. and six. DeRozan comes in here. DeRozan wants a championship. 30 points on insane efficiency. Embiid, 22-12. and 12. Zach Levine puts up a 20-10 and 10 night. Absolutely insane. And Kevin Porter is still playing insanely well and gives us five steals in that closeout game. Who will we have in the finals here, or the conference finals? The one seed Hawks who, like I said, for whatever reason, after this update, they're just a god squad now and always make it to the finals. 90 Trey, 89 DeJounte, 79 AJ Griffin, 82 Sadiq, and 82 Okongwu. We should be able to get out of here as we lose the first game, we win the second one, we lose the third one, 
We win the fourth one. We win the fifth one. Get us out of here. Let's go. We are in the finals. Those trade deadline pickups were huge. Embiid is your Eastern Conference Finals MVP. 22 points, 12 boards, 2 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks, and shoots efficiently. With the pickups we made, he doesn't even have to like put up that many points because you have Zach Levine who can go off, DeRozan can go off, Maxi can go off, and then Jaw makes it to the finals as your West Conference Finals MVP. So we have the Grizzlies here in the 2024 Finals. 97 jaw 87 vein 80 dylan brooks 80 nep uh, 89 triple j and 83 capella let's get this championship game one we lose we always lose the first game we win the second game too though or we lose the second game too please don't go down 3-0 oh my god dude can we somehow make a 3-0 comeback they sweep us in the finals man jaw just goes crazy 31 points 8 boards 14 assists I don't know how we get swept there. My starting lineup was insanely good compared to theirs. I feel like it matched up better than them. No one really went off for us here. DeRozan did not have the best shooting night. Kevin Porter Jr. didn't shoot the ball well either, and we just could not get it done. Although we're going to lose DeRozan probably in this offseason, or I'm not going to want to give him a bag, we still should be set up to be competing for the next couple years here. As I wanted to see where the... Okay, so the Brooklyn pick ended up at 6, and then the Bulls also got pick 3, so that... And they got pick seven. So the Bulls sold at the deadline and ended up getting three top seven picks, which is really good for them. They also have our pick at 28. So we're not going to have a draft pick this year. We actually have three second round picks. I'm going to trade them up for the first pick in the second round just to maybe pick up a guy who can progress over the next couple of years. So the Pistons agree to that. Here's what the top seven of the 2024 draft ended up looking like. So the Bulls got Justin Edwards, Isaiah Collier, and Omaha Bailu. They're probably going to be nasty in a couple of years here. I took Babakar Miller in the second round at the first overall pick or in the second round. Uh, just because he seemed like he had solid ratings. Team player options. I am not going to accept Bailey Sherman, I don't think. Actually, he has a decent three-point shot. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to crack the rotation. I'm not going to accept him. Qualifying offers. Maxi B-Ball Paul will come back. Mac McClung, we're still bringing him back for the vibes. All right, DeRozan wants a lot of money, but he's like the highest overall guy I can pick up in this free agency period because I do have to pay Maxi now and still pay like... The role guys like the Anthony Melton so I'm gonna try to get a team friendly deal and get him at like 26 mil front loaded for three years so until he's 37 and then at that point honestly I'm gonna put a team option on it too and he doesn't like that so maybe we'll go up to like 26.5 just in case he regresses so much by age 37 that I'll be able to cut him from the team instead of not being able to trade him I'm going to bring D'Anthony Melton back too on a three-year back deal starting at 10 mil and ending at 11. So DeMar and D'Anthony both accept. I'm going to give Maxi a five-year extension starting at 29 mil and ending at around 38.28 because I feel like by that point, he'll at least be like a mid-90s guy. Then I'm going to extend B-Ball Paul for four years starting at 9.5 mil and ending at around 11.7. So B-Ball Paul agrees and Maxi agrees as well. That is all the moves I'm going to make in this 2024 offseason. I'm going to run a nine-man rotation still as we get Mac McClung back. Maybe I'll give him a couple minutes during the regular season just to see what he can do as Embiid starts regressing. So we are on a window now, probably in like two years or three years that we should have try to win as best as we can before Embiid goes sub 90 overall as DeRozan already falls off a cliff. But he stood, he should still be pretty solid. Everyone else seems to be going up or staying the same too. So I think overall our lineup will be good. Let's sim to the second year now and get the lineup ready, which will probably be the same as last year after the trade deadline. Here is what our 10-man lineup will look like. Like I said, same as last year after the trade deadline. Well, same starting five, but the bench, we are going to give Mac McClung some minutes during the regular season here, just for the vibe, see what he can do. We actually have a four and a half star balance system this year. So I think we should still be good enough to get a high seed in the East and maybe make another finals run. Let's sim to the trade deadline where I might look for a move to move off of McDaniels and get someone else who can space the floor better. We are at the trade deadline. We're 24 and 30 and a 12 seed in the East right now. We're like four games or five games out of even being in a 10 seed. If we look at Mac McClung's stats here, clearly 
putting him in the lineup at all was a huge mistake and it was detrimental to our team. We started off like 9-20 and 20 and I had to take him out at that point. So we climbed back from 9-20 and 20 to almost a 500 team. McDaniels though has been absolutely terrible this season. So definitely need to move off of him. And then B-Ball Paul is also not shooting well. I just realized he has a D plus three point rating. So I think for him, I just need to take away his three point shot tendency and he should be a better player. The Trailblazers right now are a rebuilding team. They're out of a playing spot. And I think maybe I could try to trade them some of my older players or mid to older players and some picks to get one of their guys back. So I'm going to try to trade them Jalen McDaniels, Mac McClung, and a first for Cam Reddish. He's on the last year of his deal, so they'd have to worry about paying him after this. And then Jalen McDaniels, they have locked up and he's around the same age, I think, or he's uh, two years older. So maybe they could try to get Jalen McDaniels shot right again and work out a way to get him effective again. Mac McClung, kind of just here as a vibes guy, like he's a dunk contest championship. He can bring the vibes up in the team. Then a future first they'd get banking on us to keep getting worse over the years. They should agree to this and they do. So with that trade, Cam Reddish just replaces McDaniels in the lineup and we're gonna run a nine man. Let's sim to the end of the year and hope those trades get us back in the playoffs. 2024-25 season is about to wrap and we could not get it done. We end up as a 500 team. You can look at these awards real quick if you want to. We're kind of just going to scrap this season and hope it never or kind of forget that it ever happened as we do get Embiid still on an all NBA team. He shoots 50, 40, 84 and puts up pretty much the same stats, but it was not enough as he also gets on all defensive first team. We wouldn't have any rookies here. And yeah, the East, I guess, was just too good this year. We couldn't make up for the losses. If we do a quick run through the stats, that was not Maxi's fault, was not Embiid's fault, was not Levine's fault. Damar, he did play slightly worse, but I don't think it was really his fault we were that bad as well. Cam Reddish came in and played solid. Kevin Porter Jr. still had a good year all around. Melton played well. Milton played well still. And then B-Ball Paul, I think his three-point shots that he was taking in the first half of the season there was were detrimental to us as well as me playing Mac McClung. So we're probably just going to bring the same exact squad back and run it back next year without doing any dumb stuff like putting Mac McClung in the lineup and hopefully with B-Ball Paul's shot tendency fix, we won't be having him putting up bad shots and bringing our team down as Garland and the Cavs win the 2025 finals with him as your finals MVP. Doc Rivers is off the books and I think I'm going to pick up a new coach here. I think I'm gonna bring Ty Lue in here as he's also a veteran coach that I feel like could get the team back on track even though in real life now he's not doing the best job with the Clippers but I feel like he would do better than Doc Rivers as he's not even gonna agree to that. So I'll give Chauncey Billups a chance here instead to get our team back on track. And Chauncey agrees to it since Ty Lue rejected. I forgot to show the draft lottery, but our pick was at nine and the Thunder get it. So we don't even get our ninth overall pick this year. I only have a second round pick. I'm just going to pick up the best guy I see. Here is your top seven of the 2025 draft. If you want to stop and take a look. Rookie signings, I ended up picking up Tayshawn Bridges, who we just got to hope he progresses as reserve. As Babacar Miller will probably start getting some minutes this year. I'm going to pick up both Kevin Porter Jr. and his team option going into free agency i'm hoping i have the rights to cam reddish and i do so i can bring him back here on a somewhat team friendly deal i'll get him for 12 mil on a four-year deal bird so he's gonna end at around 15 he agrees to it and i honestly don't need to make any more moves in free agency because like i said babacar miller is gonna start getting some minutes going into this next season so i would have a 10-man rotation going into the 2026 year as in beats still regressing maxi and porter jr going up though the rosen starts falling off a cliff luckily i will be able to decline his option going through this next year though so i won't have to deal with that money anymore as shake milton comes down as well but like i said babacar miller starts going up a lot i said last year i feel like we could get back to the finals but i was dumb and i put mcclung in the lineup and b-ball paul's three shot tendency was whack so i'm hoping that this year i can actually have my team go back there because i feel like we're still pretty solid 
other than DeRozan starting to regress here. Here is what our 10 man lineup is gonna look like. Same starting five as last year, except Cam Reddish trumps DeRozan in the starting lineup now. Sixth man is going to be DeAnthony Melton, DeRozan seventh man, B-Ball Paul eighth man, Baba Carmiller ninth man, and Shake as the 10th man. Let's sim this third year now, probably stop at the trade deadline just to see if we can make any moves to improve as we're off to a horrible start here and I might actually need to make some big moves. 2025-26 season is about to wrap. I did stop at the trade deadline, but I couldn't find any trades that made our team better and made sense. So I just moved past it. We're 47 and 34, one game left against the Knicks and we win, so 48 wins. Anthony Edwards is MVP with almost, almost 40 points a night. Never seen that before. Juan Nunez, Rookie of the Year, Keontae George, Sixth Man, Wemby, Depoy, Caleb Foster, Most Improved, JB Bickerstaff, Coach of the Year, All NBA First looking like this, Second looking like this, and Third looking like this. So we do still get Embiid on there at 32 years old, putting up 19 points, 10 boards, 4 assists, a steal, 2 blocks, 52, 38, 90. Really good year from him. He does not get All, N or all Defensive First this time, or All Defensive Second, so it's surprising to see that. And we actually don't get Miller on an all rookie team surprisingly, but we do end up as a two seed this year to go against the seven seed Pistons again. Maxi leading the team in scoring though, 23 points, three boards, four assists with a steal and night shooting 50, 45, 90. Absolutely insane stats from him. Levine has also been really efficient, 18 points, four boards, five assists, shooting 53, 42, 86. Kevin Porter Jr. has a better season too, and he's up to an 85 overall. I was gonna look to trade him, but I literally couldn't find anyone better. He puts up 13, five and six on 48, 37, 78 shooting. Cam Reddish has a better year too, 11 points on 45, 37, 90. De'Anthony Melton has a better season than last year, playing really solid all around. Insanely good defense and efficient scoring. DeRozan has a better year than last year too, and he's up to an 80 overall. So he's still a decent bench guy to have. Babacar Miller has a really good rookie year, even though last year said he got uh, like one minute a night, which is dumb. But yeah, he shot efficient too and played well as a rookie. Then Shake Milton, 49-49-80 season. He's shooting insanely efficiently. And B-Ball Paul, his field goal just isn't good, even with his three-point tendency gone. So I may look to move him in one of these future years here. Let's see who the Pistons have on their squad in 2026. Kate is a 94 now, 86 Jaden Ivey. Brandon Miller is a 90 now with two 83s at their four and five. This is definitely a scary seven seed at this point as we win game one, we lose game two, we lose game three. Can we come back in game four? Wow, we go down three one. Game five, we win game six. We win, are we gonna reverse gentleman sweep? We lose in seven, man, that is so unfortunate. Embiid and Maxi go off, same with Levine and Kevin Porter Jr. But the rest of the squad is just not it. Our depth could not get it done. And yeah, I think, I don't even know what more I could do here with the assets I have as we end up losing to the team that gets out of the East and they lose in the championship game or the finals to OKC with Shea or Shy as your finals MVP. I don't know much more I could do to make this team better at this point other than just like swapping out some of the depth guys like B-Ball Paul who were not playing well. I already swapped out some other depth guys over the years but it clearly hasn't worked as we have our own pick at 26 finally so this year probably would have been the year to be bad. Here's what the top seven of the 2026 draft ended up looking like and then at my 26 pick I took Caden Boozer as he seemed like he had the best potential and best grades. Levine accepts his $49 million player option, obviously. Kevin Porter Jr., I'm gonna accept, accept him for 20 mil because I feel like he would get more potentially in free agency. And Tayshawn Bridges, honestly, you have decent ratings. Maybe I could use you in a trade in the future. Qualifying offers, I will give it to Babacar Miller. I just realized DeRozan retired. I wasn't gonna bring uh, accept his team option anyway, so either way, we have him off the books now. I'm not gonna waste any time and just move off B-Ball Paul already. He's the same overall as Drummond and he's a lot younger. But if you look at his stats here, he's a B minus inside scoring, B plus post defense and A plus rebounding as Drummond's an A, A minus and A plus. So I just rather have him on a team that's trying to compete or contend and the Spurs agree to that deal. I can't give Miller an actual deal. So I'm just gonna send the player progression and hope he comes back on the qualifying as there's no one else I'd really pick up in free agency and he does agree to it. So player progression here, 
Embiid is down to a 93. Levine is starting to regress too. We have some of our younger guys here getting better though as Drummond regresses as well. I think I might look for a Levine trade again. Okay, so if we look at last year's standings, the Hawks were a four seed, but at this point, they have Trey who's an 88, and their whole roster other than Trey is just not good at all. They don't have anyone else that's above 83 overall, so they are gonna be terrible this year. I'm gonna try to trade them Zach Levine, so we're swapping two guys here who are on the last year of their deals, but they'd be getting more value here because they're gonna get a young guy in Tayshawn Bridges who they can start to progress and hopefully grow with. A future first of mine, if Trey Young decides not to come back to Philly and we start falling off a cliff, and then Terry Taylor and Juan Toscano Anderson here are, or is the name Juan Toscano Anderson? I'm pretty sure it is. They're just here to make the money work. So let's see if they agree to this. This would be kind of a huge switch up here to get a new look for our team and hopefully get us into a better position. And they do not agree to it. They just want to swap seconds. I will do that in a heartbeat. Let's see if they agree and they do. I'm gonna try to do another huge move here to significantly upgrade our roster for probably like two more years here and try to win with Embiid. The Rockets last year were a nine seed. They have not made any progress into the playoffs as James Harden is down to an 80 overall. They signed or traded for Jimmy Butler for some reason who's starting to regress. And Shangu now is coming into his prime. He is in his what, one, two, three, four, five, sixth season coming up and has had no playoff success with this Houston Rockets team. So I'm gonna try to trade the Rockets back Kevin Porter Jr. for one more year. Maybe they could use him to move off of Jimmy Butler or James Harden. They're also gonna get Babacar Miller here, who is a young guy on the come up, had a really good first season. A second round pick just for a little bit more value and then Andre Drummond as well to have a better backup big off their bench or they could even use him there as they kind of rework their young guys coming up now. So I would trade these guys for Shengun and then Buddy Heald just to make the money work. Let's see if they agree to this. And by the way, I'm the reasoning I'm using for this is kind of just like in real life when players do not win with their team and then they want to get a change of scenery to go compete somewhere else and contend is what we're kind of doing here and saying Shengun would probably feel like that. So let's see if they agree to this trade and they do not. But again, they also just want to swap seconds. So they should agree to this and they do. Going into this next season, we're only going to run an eight man lineup. As you see, I have Embiid. He's going to run the four now. He's getting older. I don't want him banging in the post. I want a young guy in Shengun who can kind of expel that energy and then Embiid can just like be a solid backup defender and just put up a bunch of points if he can. So we're gonna have Trey at the one, Maxi at the two, Cam Reddish at the three, Embiid at the four, and Shengun at the five with Melton sixth man, Milton seventh man, Buddy Heald eighth man, and that is going to be it. At the trade deadline, I may look to move off of Buddy Heald and maybe some of these other guys here to upgrade and get a higher overall 80 guy off the bench just so our bench isn't too bad, but we'll see once we get there. We have a four star balance system. Let's hope it is enough to finally get some more depth or push further in the playoffs again. We are at the trade deadline. We're 35 and 21, but I did go look to see some of the player stats just to see if I did need to look for a trade. And Cam, Cam Reddish is playing absolutely terrible. I don't know why he's having such a bad year. And if we actually look at this guy drafted, Caden Boozer, he has insanely good ratings here already. So he could even play over Cam Reddish. And I might just look to move Cam Reddish to upgrade our roster elsewhere. So I'm gonna try to move Cam Reddish, Terry Taylor, and a second to the Jazz for Marvin Bagley and Luke Cornett. This will just give me another big on the lineup in case either Embiid or Shengun foul out because right now I don't really have another guy who can play backup center. And then I'm just going to run a really tight rotation with the other guys who are playing well. So they should agree to this and they do. With that trade, I am going to give the rookie Caden Boozer a chance at the starting lineup just to see what he can do. And hopefully he just ends up working out really well for us. Let's sim to the end of this year now and hope those moves made us better. Fourth season is wrapped. I skipped past the last game back to show the record, but here's the awards. Brandon Miller MVP, Cam Boozer, not our Boozer, gets rookie of the year. Reese Beecham, six man, Wemby Depoy, Robert Dillon, most improved and Mark Dagnall, Coach of the Year. Here's your All-NBA first, All-NBA second, and All-NBA third. So we get Shengun 
over Embiid this time. 16 points, 13 boards, six assists, a steal and two blocks. Shooting pretty decently, not the best though. Well, we get him on an all defensive team. We do not, and do we get our rookie here? We also do not get him. We fell down to a six seed. Maxi still leads the way in scoring, shooting insanely efficiently. Trey Young comes in, 21 points, almost 11 assists with a steal a night, also shoots insanely efficiently. And B still has a really good season. Even at the four spot, he puts up an actual double double this year with four assists, a steal, and still almost two blocks. Shangun, we saw his uh, All NBA stats. De'Anthony Melton has a great season too. He's been really consistent over this rebuild. Shake Milton has a down year, so that's kind of unfortunate. Maybe that was attributing to us being worse. Caden Boozer was not playing well, so I ended up swapping him out in the lineup because we just ended up losing a bunch of games. Bagley also probably wasn't the best pickup, but he is shooting better than Cam Reddish was. Buddy Heald still was a sniper off the bench, even though he is a defensive liability. So I'm hoping in the playoffs, some of these guys can just figure it out. Let's see who the Bulls have on their team in 2027 here. 87 Isaiah Collier, 87 Justin Edwards, 82 Dylan Brooks, 88 Siakam, and 89 Sabonis. So definitely a pretty solid roster up and down. But we almost have nine or 490 overall guys on our team. So like we should be able to be good here. As we lose game one, we win game two, we lose game three, we win game four. Can we take the lead? We cannot, we are down and we lose in six in the first round. Very unfortunate. Trey puts up 18 and 16 and Bede gives us a double double, but Justin Edwards goes off. Siakam and Sabonis, I guess, just decided to go off. Isaiah Kali had 23 assists, bro. Like some of these rookies that just come in are too OP. You can't really do much about it. I'll probably do one more season here. See if I can rework the roster anyway to make it a bit better. But at this point, it seems like too much of the league just has OP rookies. And as you see, like the Pelicans winning the finals with DJ Wagner at 22 years old as your finals MVP. So we did not have any rookies this year or any picks at all. And it was just an auto-generated class. So I skipped by it. And B declines his player option. So we are going to bring have to bring him back to keep trying to compete with him. Don't know who this guy is. I'm not going to give him a qualifying offer. So yeah, I'm going to give Embiid a three-year deal starting at 41 mil, front-loaded, ending at around 37. I pretty much have to bring Trey Young back here, so I'm going to extend him for five years starting at 35 mil and ending at 42. Then I'm also going to give De'Anthony Melton another contract. And all three of those guys agree. Lastly, I'm just going to bring Lou Dort in on a two-year deal to round off our rotation. And let's see how our guys look in this last player progression. Will Embiid start to fall off a cliff or will he still be in the 90 overall range he does kind of fall off a cliff he's exactly a 90 shengun will probably be a 90 at the end of this year trey young for some reason does not get up to a 90 and our bench is a bunch of low 80 to high 70 guys i feel like we could still potentially make a run this year let's sim to this last lineup get it ready and hope that we can finally make a push in the playoffs which i'm surprised we haven't done especially the year we are two seed i'm just surprised that we got eliminated there here is gonna be our last lineup for the rebuild. Trey at the one, Maxi at the two, Lou Dort at the three, Embiid at the four, Shengun at the five with Bagley sixth man, Melton seventh man, Shake eighth man, and Caden Boozer rounding it off. I might look one more time at the trade deadline to see if I can get anyone better than Bagley and kind of upgrade that way. But other than that, I don't really have any more assets that I can make a big move with. We're at the trade deadline and our record is terrible. Marvin Bagley, as expected, is not shooting the ball well at all. So I'm just going to move off of him to get a solid backup center in Kavon Looney. As you can see, we're 21 and 35 in the bottom left there, which is good enough for 15th in the conference. We're like, what, six games out of being in a playing spot so i'm going to shorten this rotation very heavily and hope we can get into at least a play in for this last year and with one game left on the season we are still a 15th seed so that's just really unfortunate you can stop and look at any of these awards here if you want to see some of these guys if you like them and want to see how they did same as these all nba teams here just going to go through it quickly if you see any guys that you're interested in and want to see how they did in this 2028 season i believe now like i said we're not even in a playoff spot i'm just going to simulate the playoffs and talk here 
I really tried to go all in in that first season, like the first actual off season there and do that Levine and DeRozan trade, which actually was a really good trade for us because we made it to the finals, but then we couldn't get it together and beat Memphis there, which was really disappointing. After that, I still think I'd made pretty good moves and I got us into a two seed again, but then we got eliminated and highly upset in the first round which is just unfortunate. And even still, like I feel like this team is pretty good overall. Yeah, I guess the Shengun and Embiid matchup or is questionable, but like Embiid can stretch the floor and Shengun can kind of stretch the floor like he's respectable from there. So I don't think it's that big of a mismatch to have in a lineup together. If the 76ers actually don't get Harden back this off season and are not able to at least like sign and trade him, I think it's gonna be very detrimental for them. And then Embiid, like I don't know how they're gonna be able to compete, especially with Tobias Harris's contract and him not playing well. All you're gonna have to do is bank on Embiid and Maxi and try to fill in the spots. So it's kind of like what I tried to do here and I feel like it did a pretty good job and it, their, their window is pretty much like the next three years, I would say, or three to four years. And then after that, I think they'd probably have to move off of Embiid at least and try to rework a rebuild. We only got to one finals and we did not win. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below about anything you thought, whether it was trades or signings I made. Hope you're all doing well. I think I have three more teams left that I have not rebuilt this season. So the next couple of rebuilds will probably be like five year rebuilds like this one just to get these top teams done. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.